Welcome to the Collaborative Resource Hub by Wellness Provisions. I'm Amy McBride, owner of Wellness Provisions, the most badass wellness business. You're tuning in to the Delay Dying blog, podcast edition, because who wants to read when you can have someone read to you? Unless you like using your eyeballs. Then catch every single essay over on the website. Just select ones, make it to the podcast. And if you're the pill popping type, no supplements, then Well EP has you covered. We supply rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We're a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this essay or the collaborative resource hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. These are my essays, my take on all things wellness, written to educate and inspire. Enjoy today's essay. Being a loser and giving up. I saw a quote on social media that said, if others can achieve it, I can too. But is that true? We like to think we can do anything we want in life, but guess what? If your genetics made you heavy set and five foot two, you're probably not gonna be a professional swimmer, no matter how bad you wanna be one. And if you cannot grasp physics, perhaps you're not cut out to be the aerospace engineer you've always dreamt of being. But you taught yourself another language and you moved to another country. Or you trained until your body nearly broke to compete in an ultra, even though no one thought you could do it. So where do you draw the line? When is giving up and calling it sensible? And when is giving up and calling it quitting too soon? In this essay, we're going to look at the problems we create from believing we can do anything or telling our kids they can do anything plus reframing how to look at failure from the get-go. It should be a pretty fun essay once I figure out what to actually write. And speaking of, do I want to be a published author? Yeah, I do. But do I want to focus on my writing every day in order to write a book fit to print? Not really. Sometimes we have dreams that are just that, dreams. And that's okay. We'll circle back to that later in this essay as I just figured out another section for this, recognizing which dreams to pursue and which should stay in your head. Boom. Everyone gets a trophy. Everyone's a winner. No one can know they're bad at something. Are you a terrible singer? Well, voice lessons might not save you. Find something else. And it's in accepting yourself in your entirety and realistically understanding limitations you may have that you can really come into your power. Thinking you can do anything can be the motivation you need to achieve it. But if you are downright awful or lack skills required that can't be learned from doubling down on practice, and you're still being told you can do that thing, that's hurting you now. It's called delusion, and that's messed up or it's risking you enter into unhealthy territory so as to not lose. Psychology Today has some words about this, which I will now reference for you. Research shows that when we create highly ambitious goals for ourselves, those goals can become harmful. For example, leading to unethical behavior in order to meet those ambitious goals or leading us to feel like a failure when we don't achieve them. And yes, there are studies which back this up. The unethical behavior part is pretty wild though, huh? And what about this blind delusion we extend to children? It's sending a very wrong message. Clinical psychologist Erica Reicher says, in regards to all children being winners, I see books like You Can Be Anything as a mirror of our own anxieties about our children's identities and futures. I suspect that many of us harbor the secret desire that our children's accomplishments will reflect well on our parenting and, more selflessly, that our children's high achievement will guarantee their well-being. This is not to say the parents shouldn't expect their children's best or encourage them to work hard and persevere, just that a focus on achievement, per se, ultimately does kids and ourselves a disservice when we create a mindset 
that high achievement is better than being average, that high achievers are more special or deserving, we diminish kids' ability to value both themselves and others, end quote. Plus, if you want your kid to succeed in this world and not to become a meme on the internet when they get older, then they need to realize not everyone is a winner. Competition can be healthy. You don't always get what you want. And you being terrible at something is actually okay. Dreaming versus reality. As I mentioned in the beginning of this essay, I have a dream of being a writer. But you know what I don't do? Actively pursue anything that would move me closer to that dream, aside from writing essays for this blog. I used to write short stories, and they were good too, but I don't anymore. Clearly, I don't want to be a published author that bad if I'm not willing to do the work to get there. Do you want to be a famous musician? Are you eating, sleeping, and breathing your band, instrument, writing, touring, networking, promoting? Are you sacrificing friendships, groceries from somewhere other than the dollar store, or sleep? Because that's the thing. If you aren't willing to make sacrifices, you don't want that dream bad enough. If you're being held back by fear, then take an inventory of what you want, what you have, and what you've got to lose, and see if you can break through the fear barrier. Maybe you just don't want your dream bad enough. That's okay, too. Some dreams are just fine living inside your head, but recognize when they aren't actually going to happen and own that and perhaps replace that dream with something attainable that does fuel you with a sense of purpose and can actually come into fruition, even if it feels average. Life is about being driven towards a greater purpose. So stop telling everyone you're going to be a rock star if you're doing fuck all to dominate that goal and be the best dog walker you can be if that's what you're actually doing. Remember that dreams do not happen on their own. You have to make them happen. Accomplishing anything requires focus, dedication, sacrificing something, and rejection. Lots of rejection. I mean, lots. So get used to that too. Good old rejection. I can't tell you how much rejection I've faced through wellness provisions. Starting this business, trying to get interviews set up, social media numbers, the list goes on. But I'm still here because my actual dream, my true purpose, moreover than being a writer, is helping others. So I keep getting back up and trekking forward because giving up on the greater good just isn't worth it. With bruises and cuts, I push through the rejection because helping others is what means the most to me. Reframing failure. Calling it can be the smartest decision sometimes. Quitting, giving up, whatever. Making the decision to move on from a goal or a dream upon realizing it wasn't what you thought it would be or your passion has waned or you realize that you care more about what you're sacrificing than the dream itself are all amazing insights to gain and will only steer you in a better direction in your life. Society tells us that quitting is bad, but if you quit something after refining your likes and dislikes or reassess your priorities and what's important to you, how is that bad? If you quit something in order to pursue something more fitting, that's incredible. Knowledge is gained through experience. Even if it's a relationship we're talking about, you have to move in with that person, for example, in order to see all the things that drive you fucking insane and realize the relationship won't work. You did it, you learned. That's giving up or failure, creating success right there. Failing at anything is actually giving you an opportunity to learn, improve, and make adjustments, even if those adjustments mean abandoning that thing or person. Recognizing when something isn't working anymore is a strength not a weakness. So own the hell out of that. You can't have one without the other. But what if you quit something to do nothing? Well, congratulations. That is failure at its finest. If you quit because it was too hard and you're now directing your energy into, well, absolutely nothing instead, 
That's not forward momentum, my friend. That's being a quitter. That's accepting defeat and not redefining your purpose. You've got to have a purpose. But that's another essay for another day. So if you're feeling stuck about what to do, unsure if your quitting is a positive redirection or a future regret you'll have, then reach out to me. We can get a wellness coaching session on your calendar and figure this out together. I want to see you succeed, truly, because that feeds my own purpose of helping others. So maybe I'm kind of selfish. Anyway, don't give up. Unless it's the right thing to do, then quit. Over and out. Amy McBride, Wellness Provisions. Life. Was I miss? Until I met.